There is a massive update to the Billy Mitchell story from a few years ago. The King of Kong documentary went viral showing a competitor named Steve Wiebe trying to take Billy Mitchell's Donkey Kong score from him, the world record. Okay. It also showed us that Billy had help from the old Twin Galaxies in disqualifying Steve's tapes that he sent in, and it created a good guy versus bad guy situation where Billy was the bad guy, stopping fair play against his long-held world record. Billy wasn't nice to Steve in the documentary either, but in the end, Steve Wiebe won, and he beat Billy Mitchell's world records, and all was good. Then, the internet lit up when all of us reported the evidence that came out showing Billy Mitchell played on an emulator called MAME instead of playing on actual arcade machines. This was in the recording of his records. No updates came in for about a year, that is, until out of nowhere Guinness World Records reinstated Billy's records. Both Guinness, Billy's supporters, and Billy all promised the internet that evidence would be revealed proving that he did not play on an emulator and that he should keep his scores. Most of you probably know this, but they have done nothing to refute the massive amount of evidence. Guinness has gone silent and we have been sitting here all wondering why in the world Guinness did this without releasing evidence to the contrary. It was kind of depressing really. Because we all know that with the evidence packet that's out there, and I did a live stream a few months ago reading through all of it, it took hours. There is so much evidence. There is just no way that Billy played on anything but MAME. And he used those MAME scores to illegitimately push other competitors down the leaderboard, stealing their records, according to the evidence, that is. So today, you probably think I'm going to tell you that Billy finally released the evidence, right? Actually, no. I'm going to tell you the exact opposite. Twin Galaxies has filed in court a countersuit against Billy. And in the countersuit, it references all the MAME scores, but even more, it alleges that Billy was never awarded some of his accomplishments. It also accuses Billy and Walter Day of fraud, that they purposely created Billy's persona to inflate the cash value of Twin Galaxies so that they could make money off of the image and then sell Twin Galaxies for a very high price that it wasn't worth. And if this information is true, it's going to make Billy and Guinness look even worse than they already do. Let me explain this to you really quick. First, subscribe to Carl Jobs. A lot of the information in this video is coming from his video because I'm not going to pay for the actual court document. <laughs> I'm a cheap ass. He's a respected speedrunner and he makes really good videos. Anyway, first off. I mentioned my live stream reading the mountain of evidence that shows that Billy didn't play on original hardware, thus disqualifying him from leaderboards. A sum up of that evidence can be said in just a few words, MAME signatures. A regular arcade cabinet loads scenes from different parts of the game differently because it's actual hardware than MAME does because MAME is code, it's an emulator that emulates the hardware. <laughs> And there are graphical and sound signatures that show which you've played on. So you really can't fake it. People will eventually catch you. This is what busted Billy. Mostly. It also got him disqualified from most of the high score databases, Twin Galaxies, Guinness Book of World Records, and what made him deemed as a cheater across the internet, if you remember. But in the evidence packet, there are many, many different signatures. So it isn't just one or two or three or ten different pieces of evidence. There's a lot. Billy did respond to the evidence packet. So what was Billy's evidence to exonerate himself? They were papers signed by his friends that said they watched him do the high scores so they must be real. Yeah, let that sink in. Now I don't think I need to say this. But the scientific evidence just doesn't lie. People can have fuzzy memories. Some people may not know whether or not a cabinet is running arcade hardware or MAME, right? They could just outright lie and sign a paper and no one would ever know. That's the difference between scientific evidence and testimony. The hard evidence cannot do those things. The thing Billy needed to show to prove his innocence was show the cabinet and the setup from back then and then go in and record it to show that these MAME signatures pop up on that old hardware. All of us know that it's not possible for a real cabinet to do this, and it's why some signed pieces of paper don't stand against the real evidence. So the first part of the lawsuit is covered now. It goes into the fact that Billy has never cleared his name against the evidence. 
This lawsuit takes it to the next level, though, and accuses Billy Mitchell and Walter Day of straight-up fraud, like criminal fraud. If you've watched King of Kong, then you already have a feeling of what I'm about to describe. It's the thing the documentary alluded to the entire time. It says that Walter Day and Billy disqualified world record scores that were sent in if those scores were to beat Billy, just like with Steve Wiebe in King of Kong. The real question is why? Well, if Billy has those high scores, then he gets to travel around doing interviews like most record holders. Billy gets to promote Twin Galaxies the whole time. Also, radio shows, books, Guinness Book of World Records, all these things show back on Twin Galaxies. Seeing as how Billy and Walter Day were both owners of the company, if somebody else was to beat out Billy, then they would be going around being lauded as the King of Kong like Billy was, and no advertising and attention or value would be given to Twin Galaxies because of it, and thus Walter and Billy would have no way of gaining in that scenario. It was the part of the King of Kong and Billy Mitchell that never made much sense, constantly saying that they had all these accomplishments and that they played live against people but never seeing it. We still have the memes of King of Kong. Um, I've got a Donkey Kong kill stream coming up. Want to see a Donkey Kong kill stream? <laughs> I cannot say that without laughing. It's so good. Billy and Walter always talked about how great Billy was. And Billy always talked up how he played in public against other people. But if you really think about it, other than those closed off scores, with just Billy's friends as the witnesses, with each recording having maimed signatures, there's no place where you can watch Billy face off against other people. And then it makes sense why he avoided playing against Steve Wiebe in a way, right? Now in reality, Billy is good at Donkey Kong and Pac-Man. But if you do watch Twitch or take in high score world record the scene around those games, there are many better players out there and this is exactly what old Twin Galaxies alleges about Billy. I'm sorry, new Twin Galaxies alleges about Billy. The lawsuit even goes further, alleging that Billy and Walter used company money for themselves on top of doing the things that inflated the company's value fraudulently, which is a no-no. We all know-know that that's a no-no. <laughs> now, if you have followed along, you know there are other documentaries that cleared up the discrepancy in the King of Kong. And there are many other people fighting for the score other than Billy and Steve, right? You've heard of the King of Con, where Dwayne Richards shows proof of other people that beat out Billy back in the day? Personally, I think it's possible that Walter could have told the King of Kong documentary crew uh, uh, you know, some lies on top of the fact that they probably didn't have access to other people. It, this was just about Steve Wiebe and Billy Mitchell, right? The lawsuit says that Walter Day purposely erased other scores so that Billy could be on top and that this is a defining act of fraud. Because if your score database has been tampered with at all, it shows that your database is faulty or even valueless. Because how is anybody going to go back through and fact check every score to make sure that the other scores weren't tampered with like the Donkey Kong score was? And selling Twin Galaxies as a company, the value rests upon that database being something that is protected and factual. See the issue? Do you see how taking an altered database and selling it as a perfect database, withholding the important information that it was tampered with from the next buyer could be fraud? as it alleges. Anyway, let's keep moving. The King of Khan talks about how King of Kong is staged due to it not including other score holders. Well, that could be, I don't know. I think the doc shows the true nature of what was going on for so long at Old Twin Galaxies. That's a subject for another video. The biggest claim is over the video game player of the century award. The thing that Billy held up as validation that he is the king of the video game. Billy and Walter are the only two people that we have to say that Billy was given this award by Namco. And the lawsuit claims that Namco never gave this award to Billy. So I wanted proof. You probably do too, right? Well, if you look at the bottom of the award, as Carl pointed out, it is signed by Walter Day a month before they went to Japan. The picture that everybody sees of Billy in Japan with the owner of Namco is alleged to be just a photo opportunity that Namco agreed to to promote the 20th anniversary release of Pac-Man for the PlayStation. If you read the paragraph on the award itself, it says that it was given by Twin Galaxies. I'll put it up on the screen, read it. It says, for holding more high scores than anyone else in 25 years span for the first perfect Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Burger Time, and Centipede. So did Shigeru Miyamoto give Billy the, the award? 
All you have to do is read the award that he was given in Tokyo to know that this is a bold-faced lie. The plaque he was given says that Niyamoto congratulates Billy on the first perfect game of Pac-Man. It says nothing about video game player of the century at all. I'll show you. It's blurry, but you can make it out. Kind of hard to read. Obviously, it says William Mitchell Jr., and then it gives them dresses or something. As father of Pac-Man, I wish to something, my something, something like uh, gratefulness or something, an achieving Pac-Man player something, perfect score of 335 and then 360 on the Pac-Man game. And it goes even further, but if you go through this, you can tell, and you got to look at it really close with a magnifying glass, man, I ain't playing. Uh, it doesn't say anything about video game player of the century. At the bottom, the entire Namco video game to congratulate you and thank you or something for blah, 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 perfect game of Pac-Man with something and best wishes and yours very truly, Namco Limited. And then it's got the name signed and chairman and CEO, Migayo Nakamura. Uh, there you go. I say his name wrong earlier. <laughs> I might have. <laughs> Who knows? I'm trying, y'all. Damn it. Leave me alone. I'm just playing. <laughs> okay, so let's get this done. All over the internet, you can find Billy shown literally saying that he was given the video game player of the century award by the Miyamoto, by the CEO. Am I, it's Makinara. Dude, I'm saying it wrong. By the CEO of Namco. <laughs> and in many interviews, you can hear Billy say it himself and Walter Day. They are the ones that made this up and put it out there, according to the lawsuit and the evidence we have. So the lawsuit says Walter and Billy made this lie up to start getting appearances for Billy to add legitimacy to him and then use the image that it brought to hike up the value of Twin Galaxies constituting fraud. And when I heard that the lawsuit said this, I told myself, there's no way, until I read it myself. It's pretty damning, honestly. That means that there is checkable evidence to back up the claims made by the new Twin Galaxies. So the next part of the lawsuit is pretty ironic and awesome, if Billy and his friends did this. Remember earlier I told you that Billy had signatures from people who claimed to have witnessed him set the scores on real hardware, which we know isn't true due to the recordings, but... You can assume then that these people are lying for Billy, most likely, because they gained something out of it themselves, right? The lawsuit names the people that helped Billy perpetrate the lie. Some of those people? Todd Rogers? That's right, Todd Rogers, the record holder that had all of his records thrown out due to outright faking them with impossible record scores that the game couldn't even get, remember? Todd's girlfriend is also named. Several others that have signed on papers helping Billy and Day get away with doing this as the countersuit alleges, of course. This is just ironic, because if all of this is true, it means this. It means that Billy and Todd, Walter and others realized that they could lie and manipulate those that held these high scores, knowing with the popularity of the games that it would eventually blow up and become profitable. So they all set to work putting key people in certain positions as record holders, referees, and then protecting them as the best. The whole time using the very people they assigned as referees to enter the scores, toss out others, and boost those that are connected so that they could have a way to gain fame and money through the manipulation and lie. All of this would have worked too if it wasn't for those damn YouTubers. <laughs> I'm just I'm just being stupid. It would have never been proven or brought up in court at all if Billy wouldn't have gone around suing anyone that called him out or talked about it or threatened to sue them. You remember Apollo Legend, don't you? The YouTuber that busted out Todd and Billy with million view videos? He had to delete those videos and was sued by Billy, forcing him to settle with him due to some mistake that he made in the process, but that is a huge story for another video that I'm working on right now. So what happens now? Well, this is all alleged at this time, and until the lawsuit continues, we won't know the outcome, but all of it is hitting ahead and is pretty damning. It means even though Guinness bowed down to Billy through legal threat without mentioning the science and evidence at all, that others out there are not willing to fold so easily and if they do prove fraud, there could be a lot of trouble for Billy and Walter Day going forward. Or, it honestly could go the other way. No matter what happens, I'm going to keep you updated. And don't forget to check out Carl Jobs for breaking this news in the first place. 
I'll see you later after I say this about Guinness Book of World Record. I will never read another Guinness record. I'll never watch another Guinness record. And you should tell people who read Guinness what happened here. See you in the next one.